Welcome to step two of building our V8 style Beetle Roadster. Today is the more exciting step and that is getting the power plant and gearbox ready for fitting. We are using the Chevy 6.2 liter. This particular one is 415 horses. We also do have 525 horses. But today we'll be using the 415 horses, which I'm sure should be enough. So today there are a couple of things that we have to do to this engine. The, the most important is we're going to turn the manifold around because we can't be sucking air on this side. We've got a firewall in the way. We're also going to take the water pump away. And then at the back we're going to add the gearbox, the flywheel, the clutch and everything else. The reason we take the water pump away is because due to the space issue on the Beetle, we have a firewall that sits as far back as possible in the car. Otherwise, there will be no room for a decent sized human being. There's an inlet and exit sitting here and they would go straight into the firewall. So this whole boy here, we are not gonna use. We're gonna put that one side. So this just makes sure nothing goes in there. In the Beetle, we have to take this manifold and turn it 180 degrees. Again, the reason being we've got a firewall sitting here. The only way to fix it is to turn the manifold around and suck air at the back of the engine. The first thing is loosen the manifold and loosen the fuel rail and pick the manifold and fuel rail out of the way. You can detach this breather pipe like that, and then she will lift clear of the engine. So very important, you cannot possibly afford something falling in the air. So on the LS, this oil pressure sensor is in the way for when we turn the intake manifold around. So we are gonna remove this plate with the sensor. We're gonna remove it completely, cut it, seal it, close it back up, because we're going to use our oil pressure from another point on the engine. These guys have been tightened, but there's no real torque. And this was simply just lift out of here, like that. Over here, you can see the oil passage. And that manifold that we just removed has got a sensor and it's picking up that oil pressure. So over here we've got another oil passage right by the oil filter which is quite convenient and we're going to put our own pickup in there with a flexible hose to our junction from where we can then read oil pressure. On something like this, this is purely a sealing cover. The whole idea is that you want to just nip these bolts because the work's being done by the O-ring gasket below it. We're gonna just redirect this little guy because it's gonna go straight into our firewall which is sitting here. So we're gonna just remove it. We're gonna just bend this guy that way and put it back on. So when we place the manifold, you will notice that the manifold was designed that during manufacture, it would be impossible for the assemblers to put it the wrong way around. So we are putting it the wrong way around. So now we need to look at where the interference is. Uh, here we can see a small interference. So we're gonna remove that. There's definitely one here. So I'm gonna take it off again and I'm gonna just mull that out quickly. There we go. Okay, when you've done enough tests, you are sure nothing can interfere. Clean this area, take your masking tape away and place the manifold again. You can reposition the intake. Then you can put all these bolts back in. This pulley 
your crank pulley is only used to do one thing and that's to turn alternator. So we've designed a system of hanging the alternator here because within the car that's the best position. When you fit, fit the belt you're going to add it to the front groove of the crank pulley and then you're going to feed this guy around the tensioner and then you're going to put it onto the alternator. When fitting the new water manifold remember to remove your plugs and then you're going to use the same gaskets that the other water pump arrived with. I'm going to do this section with the cover plate not being on because it's easier to see what we do and with both gaskets in place you come then back to the engine and just we're going to not talk this up now because the cover plate's not on but then you guys can see how it all fits in here.